2024 is around the corner and this is the best time to upskill yourself. So if you're planning to become a software engineer in next one year or if you are planning to upskill yourself, then this is the video for you. We are going to see the roadmap which will help you to understand the different technologies which you can learn in the next one year and upskill yourself and which will also help you to get a good paying job as well. So without waiting any further, let's jump into the video. So there are two streams that you can start with. Either you completely go ahead with the JavaScript tech or you can go ahead with JavaScript and a Java tech where you can be a full stack developer. So we'll go through both the tracks and you can decide which one to go for because this both the techs are really high in demand in today's world. One is Mern stack and the other one is Java full stack. Okay. So these are the two tracks that you can go for. So within the Mern stack, it is completely based on your JavaScript. So your base language would be JavaScript and for here your base language would be Java. Now within this MERN, MERN stands for MongoDB, E stands for Express. This is used to build your web application. That's the Express framework. R stands for React framework for creating your full stack applications and N stands for Node.js. Okay. So with this tech stack, you are going to build your application. So that's why it's called as MERN stack. So you can go ahead with this route or Within the Java, what you can do is with the Java language, you can learn the Spring Boot. Okay. Spring Boot is based on Spring Framework, which will help you to build your web applications, your microservices, your reactive applications, lot more. Okay. So this is highly in demand. So you can build and learn Spring Boot applications alongside you can learn JavaScript because JavaScript is used in react applications right because react is built on top of javascript so you need to learn basics of javascripts how the asynchronous uh, javascript works and everything then you will be able to grab react very easily so if you're going with the full stack developer then you need to learn javascript and react but within this full stack if you are just going with the backend developer if your path is to be a backend developer then you do not need to learn javascript and react as of now you can focus more on java spring boot and how you can build the microservices and all those stuffs okay so this is the path that we are going so you can go with a moon stack developer or a java full stack developer or a java backend developer okay where you can learn microservices and everything now within this you will be able to learn microservices okay which will help you to build the applications which are highly scalable, highly reliable and lot more things. Okay. So there are a lot of videos around microservices, Spring Boot, React, all in our channel. So you can go through those videos and you can learn more. Now, once you are learning these technologies, give yourself a time and build some projects. Okay. So building a project is really important. So at this particular time, you have learned few technologies within the Mern stack, few technologies within the Java full stack roadmap and few technologies within the Java backend stuff. Okay. So learning those things will help you a lot, but what will help you a lot more is building the project. So start creating small, small projects and have a checkpoint, like whatever you learn, you are able to build with those as well. Okay. So build some projects. You will get a lot of uh, ideas within the internet, like what kind of projects that you can build. So build those projects, which will help you a lot. The next phase is to learn more on top of these technologies. Okay. So whatever the technologies that you are working on, either Mern or Java full stack or Java backend. Okay. Whatever you are learning. Okay. For everything, what you need to learn is you need to learn Docker. Okay. Let me just write here. You need to learn Docker that is containerization. My spelling is really bad. So do just ignore it. Okay. So what do you need to learn? You need to learn Docker and how to containerize your applications. So in this world, whenever you are building your application, there are a lot of components involved, right? So building all those components within the one container, which can run anywhere you want. That is a really good thing that you can learn and that will help you a lot in your career as well. So it will be like you're from first level engineer to a second level engineer when you learn Docker. Okay. So learning Docker is very important and it will help you a lot in saving time in building applications faster and a lot more things. So learn Docker. There is a tutorial as well in our channel. You can go through that and learn Docker as well. So once you're learning Docker, you should also learn about any cloud technologies. You should learn cloud technologies. Start with AWS, I would say. Okay. Because with AWS, you will have a lot more content available about how to deploy your applications, how to get the compute and all those things. So start with AWS. But if you are aware about any other cloud services as well, like GCP, Azure, uh, DigitalOcean, there are a lot more cloud providers available. So 
learn any one thing the base concept is same but there are different ways to get your compute deploy applications and all those stuffs so learn that as well it will help you a lot okay so now two things are clear how to build your application how to containerize your application and how to deploy that containers in cloud so you will get a full-fledged application running okay on top of that you will learn git and github as well right where you will be creating your repositories and you will maintain your code base right all the organization uses git in one or the other flavor either github bitbucket or gitlab right so these are different versions different flavors of git but yeah at the end everything is git so you should learn git try to learn some commands as well so whatever the changes whatever the top layer changes you will you will be familiar with how git works okay so these are the things that you should learn on top of this you should learn the basics of devops as well okay so what will be included in devops so let's see that as well so within the devops what it will be included is how you can build your applications and how you can deploy your applications that's the one part how you will be able to maintain your applications scale your applications and all those stuffs are included and how you can get a lot of resources automated without doing a lot of manual work all these things combines together and with the help of this developer and operations teams what you are doing is you are building a complete pipeline with reduced manual efforts and everything is automated right you learn docker that is the containerization right so next step is to learn kubernetes kubernetes will help you to orchestrate your containers okay suppose you build one application right suppose app one and you build another application that is app two now what you need to do is you need to install this app in four servers you need to install this app in five servers and all this needs to be maintained right suppose you build another application that needs to be deployed in another three to four servers so there are a lot of things that you can build in the organizations so what kubernetes will help is kubernetes will help to orchestrate each and everything with the help of code with the help of configuration so you just create the configurations you just create the config where you can define okay application one should be deployed in four servers application two is deployed in five servers okay you just define the configurations and kubernetes will take care of each and everything so suppose you define that okay it has to be in four servers it has it has to be in five servers so if it all it gets down if any one server crashes then kubernetes will be responsible based on the configuration to create a new server deploy your application in that server and you will always have that four servers available so your traffic is always divided so there are a lot of configurations available within the kubernetes we have a complete tutorial as well you can check it out as well okay so this is all about kubernetes so this is a good step to learn which will take you to the next level okay so kubernetes is something you should learn now if you learn the cloud right within the cloud suppose you learn aws and suppose you want to get some computes okay suppose you want to have one compute to get the compute what you will do you will go to the aws right you will go to aws you will do couple of clicks and you will get a one compute so one manual step is required right similarly for your another application what you are trying to do is you are trying to create another compute in aws deploy your application too right similarly there are a lot more if suppose you have 20 application then it will be very difficult to go to aws and create 20 computes in manually suppose you might have a requirement like suppose there are a couple of couple of computes a couple of different application that you need to deploy in google cloud suppose in azure okay so going there creating a compute there and deploying your application also takes times creating a different resources right so for that what you need to do is you need to learn infrastructure as code that is iese so what infrastructure as code will do is infrastructure as code will be defined based on the code for your resources that you need so suppose you need 10 servers available that 10 servers need java install some configurations needs to be there with some versions all those things you require so rather than going there creating those servers uh, installing java and everything what you do is, what you do is you write a code for that okay you write a code and that particular code is been executed and all the resources will be created for you so that means you automated each and everything whatever the manual steps were there you automated and with the base of code you build everything right so that is your infrastructure as a code with the help of code you will be able to build your resources okay so this is something that we should learn as well and for this the best tool available best technology available is terraform okay so if you're going ahead with the devops technologies and if you want to learn devops and if you are 
planning to go ahead in that trajectory then learning all the stuffs makes sense but if you are within the first tracks that we have defined then the basic information of terraform is more than enough to get you started so once you learn terraform and you know how to create the resources based on the isc files that you create the next step is to be learning about the providers as well so terraform has different providers those providers will be providing the resources for creating the isc terraform files for your isc suppose within the terraform i want to use the aws resources i want to use gcp resources or i want to use suppose azure resources okay so for all these resources what aws is doing is aws provided a provider provider plugin for terraform so within the terraform if i'm creating a terraform file where i want three aws computes then this provider has already provided a basic code structure where i can use it and provides the configuration and it will create everything for us okay similarly gcp has also provided and azure has also provided there are more than 200 providers available which has given a lot of basic code structures basic boilerplate codes where you can pass the configurations and everything will be created similarly you should learn about creating your own providers as well which will be taking you to the next step where you can use isc's framework like terraform and you can build top of on that as well like if your organization is using your own version of cloud computing then for that particular cloud computing you can create the providers and using terraform application developers can use that and create their resources as and when required okay so this will also take you to the next level to have a good knowledge about devops engineering so these are all the things that you should learn to upskill yourself and taking you to the next level in your career also one more thing i would do is building projects so you learn some technologies and you build a basic projects but no i would suggest learn these technologies build projects then learn new technologies okay learn whatever we started right first if i take the example of your spring boot path learn spring boot learn microservices then if you are also going with the full stack application learn react javascript create those projects then try to learn cloud computing learn docker containerize your application and deploy your applications in cloud okay then also learn about kubernetes which can help you containerize orchestration which will help you to deploy your applications in multiple servers servers you can do upscaling downscaling lot of things you can learn with kubernetes also try to learn some basics of devops where you can create your own terraform files Okay, there are a lot of different configuration tools also available like Ansible, Puppet, which will help you to configure however you require, right? However resources you require, this will help you to configure those things. Suppose if you need a container, if you need a resources, so within that resources, you need Java install, you need SQL install, you need some other third party application needs to be installed. You can configure each and everything using Puppet or Ansible. You will create configuration files and those codes will be run on your resources and everything will be configured. You just go there, run your container, Docker containers and everything would be good. So you can see there are a lot of things available which you can automate and have the great productivity as well. So there are a lot of tools available which will help to improve your productivity, help to improve your coding standards and a lot of things. Okay, so this is all you can learn and building projects is a must. So try learning new things and based on that, try building new projects as well. Okay, so building projects is a really key important thing in your career if you're not building projects and you're just going through the tutorials then you won't be able to learn that much so you need to get your hands dirty you need to learn and learn alongside this you can always use the ai tools right there are a lot of different ai tools available chat gpt is available there are different other libraries other uh, services also available which the help of ai can get you a lot of things right so leverage ai to upskill yourself you will get a lot of information you will get a lot of help to quickly get started in a lot of things right so this is also a good way to leverage ai to upskill yourself and to get a better paying jobs so these are the steps that you can follow to upskill yourself if you're starting out or if you are upskilling yourself and getting a high paying job if you think there is something needs to be added then also let me know in the comment section below which this will help in our community as well if you have any doubts regarding any of the things that we have covered and if you want any tutorial specific tutorials about any of the specific technology then also do let me know in the comment section below i will try to create the tutorials for that as well so that's it in this video if you like this video give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for the upcoming videos you can also click on the join button below to join my channel and support me i will see you in the next video till then happy coding Bye bye